In the bustling streets of 1850s New Orleans, Edmund McElhenney, a banker with a knack for experimentation, received a unique gift from a soldier returning from the United States-Mexican War. The soldier presented him with dried peppers acquired in Mexico, urging McElhenney to incorporate them into his meals. Intrigued, McElhenney planted the seeds from these peppers in his wife's garden on Avery Island, Louisiana. It would take 20 years, but eventually those very seeds would flourish into the culinary superpower we know today as Tabasco. The Civil War of 1861-1865 brought significant upheaval to the McElhenney's life. Fleeing the advancing Union Army, he sought refuge on Avery Island, owned by his wife's family and known for its salt mines. Unfortunately, the island's strategic importance led to the invasion by the Union forces in 1863, prompting the McElhenney's to seek safety in Texas until the war's end. Upon the return to Avery Island in 1868, the family discovered their plantation in ruins, and their mansion had also been plundered. Amidst the devastation, a glimmer of hope emerged. The crop of hot peppers had survived. Determined to turn his misfortune into a monetary opportunity, Edmund McElhenney crafted a spice sauce using vinegar, Avery Island salt, and the resilient peppers. The next year, he sent out 658 bottles of sauce at $1 apiece wholesale to grocers around the Gulf Coast, particularly those in New Orleans. McElhenney packaged the sauce in small, cologne-type bottles with sprinkler tops, which he then corked and sealed in green wax. The sprinkler top was important because his pepper sauce was concentrated and best used when sprinkled, not poured. Though they no longer seal the bottles with wax, the sauce inside is every bit as pungent as the one McElhaney first bottled in 1868. As far as naming the new creation goes, initially considering the name Petite Anne Sauce after the island, McElhaney settled on Tabasco as his second choice. He went with the naming of Tabasco because it's a word of Mexican Indian origin, believed to mean, quote, place where the soil is humid, or place of the coral or oyster shell, which accurately reflects that of Avery Island. The initial sauce distribution of 658 bottles caught the attention of General Hazard, a federal administrator in the region who recognized its potential. General Hazard's brother was the largest wholesale grocer in the United States at the time, which then would further propel Tabasco's journey by introducing the sauce to the New York market. In 1870, McElhenney secured a patent for the pepper sauce, marking the formal recognition for his creation. The ensuing years saw the brand's expansion, with an office opening in London in 1872 to cater to the growing European market. As demand soared, packaging evolved, with bottles featuring metal tops replacing those corked bottles sealed with green wax. The late 19th century brought unexpected twists to Tabasco's narrative. By 1895, Tabasco had transcended national borders. British Field Marshal Lord Kitchener's troops carried Tabasco pepper sauce during their invasion in the Sudan, showcasing the global reach of this fiery condiment. The 20th century witnessed both challenges and triumphs for Tabasco. In 1898, another Louisiana entrepreneur and former McElhenney employee named B.F. Trappe began growing Tabasco chilies from Avery Island seeds. He founded the company B.F. Trappe & Sons and began producing his own sauce, which was then called Tabasco as well. The McElhaney family eventually responded to this challenge, and a several-decade-long feud was ended by receiving a trademark for their Tabasco brand in 1906. Another massive boost in popularity for the Tabasco brand would occur in 1921, when a bartender named Pete Petois, an American bartender in Paris, concocted a blend of vodka and tomato juice. In 1934, Petois introduced the drink to the King Cole Bar in the St. Regis Hotel in New York. It was there that he enhanced the recipe with pepper, Worcestershire sauce, Tabasco, lemon, lime, and horseradish. Petois marketed his tomato-based creation as a remedy for hangovers, and it became extremely popular because of this, thus boosting the demand for Tabasco even more at the time. In 1929, Trappes expanded into two plants, one in Lafayette, Louisiana, and the other in New Iberia, Louisiana. That same year, the McElhaney family won a trademark infringement suit against the Trappes. From that time on, only McElhenney sauce could be called Tabasco, and competitors were reduced to merely including Tabasco chilies in their list of ingredients. They could not use the Tabasco name. The two companies had competed with identically named sauces for 31 years. Even though Trappes was forced to change their name, they did still find success, and they are still there today. Upon the initiation of a British government isolationist, quote, by British initiative in 1932, Parliament prohibited the acquisition of Tabasco pepper sauce, a beloved condiment in England since 1868, and previously accessible in the House of Commons dining rooms. This sparked protests from Parliament members, aptly named, quote, the Tabasco Tempest, 
leading to the eventual reinstatement of Tabasco pepper sauce on Parliament tables. Legend has it that even Queen Elizabeth used Tabasco pepper sauce on her famous lobster cocktail. The mid-20th century introduced a unique chapter in Tabasco's history during the Vietnam War. Brigadier General Walter S. McElhenney, inspired by his experience with sea rations during World War II, conceived the idea of the Charlie Ration Cookbook. Thousands of soldiers received this cookbook wrapped around two ounce bottles of Tabasco pepper sauce in waterproof canisters. This would transform their mundane rations into flavorful meals with the addition of the sauce, thus adding to the recognizability and growth of the brand in areas that may have not been able to secure a bottle of hot sauce otherwise. In the present day, over 150 years since the inception, Tabasco sauce has preserved its fundamental recipe, production process, and the ingredients with remarkable consistency. While maintaining the enduring essence, certain refinements have been introduced. Notably, the aging process for the mash has been extended, with maturation occurring for up to three years in white oak barrels, and the use of high-quality distilled vinegar has become a standard. This is in comparison to how the sauce was originally aged for a month in crocks and jars and barrels or whatever they had at the time, pulled from those containers, mixed with white wine vinegar, and aged as a result for another month. Furthermore, the Tabasco brand has expanded its repertoire, now offering an array of varieties. A diverse selection of up to nine varieties is available in grocery store shelves, the availability of which may vary depending on your geographical location. This evolution reflects the brand's commitment to adapting to changing tastes and preferences while staying true to its timeless origins. The saga of Tabasco hot sauce is a tale of resilience, innovation, and global impact. From its humble beginnings in Avery Island to gracing the tables of international dignitaries, Tabasco's success can be boiled down to one simple sentence that South Louisiana has very much embraced. Everyone just wants to eat good food. That's all I've got for you in the history of Tabasco. If you do ever find yourself in South Louisiana, I would recommend checking out Avery Island. You can take a really cool tour of the Tabasco plant, and it's always a fun little stop if you're in the area. But thanks for checking out the video. I'll catch you all on the next one, and I'll see you then.